What's the best gift you've ever given someone? There's nothing quite like that joy you feel when you find something that you just know is the perfect gift for someone. I still remember a present that I gave a friend about 20 years ago. I regarded it as the perfect gift. It was a kettle. So far, so boring. But this wasn't just any kettle. This kettle, upon bringing its contents to boiling point, would play a message in the voice of a celebrity announcing that it had finished. My favourite being the weatherman Ian McGaskill. Why did I think this was the perfect present? Was it because I'd always thought that the receiver wanted an electronic water boiling celebrity impersonator in the kitchen? Well, I certainly think they did enjoy receiving it, but secretly I think there was also a sense that I thought it would give me pleasure in giving such a ridiculous, but be in no doubt, genius gift. And it did. I still remember being excited, imagining my friend's reaction when they opened that present and they got their brain around the concept of the item that stood in front of them. Now, some time later, that very same kettle went on to malfunction, overheat and burn a hole in the kitchen worktop. So perhaps proof that if it be needed, that electrical water heating and celebrity impersonations are not the ideal bedfellows that you might imagine that they are. That kettle ended up in the bin in disgrace. Christmas, as so many songs put it, I'm looking at you, Cliff, is a time for giving and a time for receiving. But sometimes when we look at the world around us today, when we see the assorted mayhem of Christmas shopping, the pandemonium of things like Black Friday and Cyber Monday, it's easy to think that Christmas has become an over-commercialised, money oriented enterprise. Well, maybe there is some truth in that. But the idea of giving and receiving gifts is woven throughout the Bible story. So, in a sense, Christmas is all about giving gifts. Certainly the Bible can be quite explicit in how giving valuable gifts is a great thing to do. In his letter to the Corinthians, Paul writes about this extensively. Verse 6 says, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Paul is clear that God works through gifts. God works through our generosity. The more generous we are, the more God has to work with. So what does being generous actually look like? I reckon generosity is giving away more than you might feel initially tempted to. For example, if you're a busy person and you don't have much free time, making some time available for someone or for something, that's generous. Likewise with money. If you don't have much money but you still give some of it away to others, that's generosity. So rather than bemoaning the excesses of the season, should we perhaps be embracing this idea of buying and giving valuable gifts at Christmas for the ones we love. Well, that might come down to how you define the word valuable. You see, being generous doesn't necessarily mean dealing with expensive stuff. When Mary and Joseph arrived at Bethlehem, Mary heavily pregnant and needed somewhere for shelter, it wasn't gold, frankincense or myrrh that would help them in that moment. They were reliant on the generosity of people sharing something that they already had. A stable where animals were kept. Sometimes in our modern, comfortable world, we look at the nativity and we focus on how demeaning it may have been for Mary and Joseph to be in a stable with the animals. But I wonder if that does the innkeeper characters a disservice. They gave what they could to people who needed help. They were generous with what they had. 
and to Mary and Joseph, that would have been a hugely valuable gift. Perhaps the problem with so much of the Christmas gifting around us is that it focuses on us having to acquire stuff in order to then give it to others. But Paul is clear that when it comes to true generosity, this isn't always the case. Verse 10. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. You can use the things that God has already blessed you with generously to help others. And absolutely sometimes this will be material things. And absolutely sometimes this will be financial things. We're called to use our wealth and our money to support others, to support church, to support God's kingdom. And sometimes we don't like to think about that, but the Bible talks about money and what we should spend it on a heck of a lot. Sharing our finances is one way that we are called to be generous with what we have, but it's not the only way. We can be generous with our time, our attention, even our thoughts. Just noticing someone else, lending someone a book or the use of our car, messaging someone to say that you still remember them. You see, it's really tempting sometimes to focus our thoughts and our plans purely on ourselves, our own needs, our own concerns, and of course up to a point we need to. We're no good to anyone if we don't look after ourselves to some degree, but it's dreadfully easy to end up clinging on to our own possessions and our own gifts and time, and not allowing them to be used or even seen by anyone else. I'm minded of people who buy expensive artwork, but then it sits in a vault, not seen by anyone. We protect what we have as belonging to us, lest anyone else take advantage of it or steal it. But God calls us to give cheerfully, not to worry about whether we'll get it back in the same condition, not to be reluctant about whether we might lose it for ourselves. And we shouldn't look at these things as being self-sacrifices either. Spending our hard-earned time and money on others does not mean that we go without. Paul speaks about how God uses our generosity to bless other people, but also about how God blesses us through being generous with our time, our money and our thoughts. Verse 12, this service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. This Christmas, be a cheerful giver. Enjoy blessing others. But remember, you can do this simply through using the gifts that you already have, the gifts of companionship, the gifts of love, of time. And yes, enjoy giving and receiving presents. But remember that the value in them isn't how much they cost you to buy, but the generosity of spirit that they represent. That the person receiving knows that they are loved and thought of, and that the person giving knows that they give cheerfully because they have been blessed themselves. As Paul says, because of the way you are generous, People will see and notice your generosity, your time, your attention. These are all things that God has given and continues to give you. And you can pass those gifts on. And through those things, be open about why you do what you do. Be openly thankful to God. And people will see your faith at work. 
and God will use that in remarkable ways. Paul spent the first part of his own life attacking and killing Christians. But when he came to know God, he realised the gifts that God had for him, despite the things he'd done, despite the acts that he'd committed. He knew the power of receiving such a valuable gift of forgiveness and love. So perhaps it's no real surprise that he then writes of the power in our own giving. The power to transform lives, relationships and communities through the love of God in Jesus Christ. 2,000 years ago, to a world in need, God gave the most remarkable gift. And it wasn't what people expected, and it wasn't even what people necessarily wanted. But in order to connect with a world that was searching for truth, God himself entered our world in the form of a baby. Jesus wasn't born a king into luxury, but from a manger in a stable gifted by others. But from that manger, Jesus went on to change the world. This Christmas, may we all see the value in what we already have. May we see the opportunities that exist every day to generously bless others. And may that generosity speak and share of God's gift to us all, the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Amen.